uh, focus on group what we call it group dynamics okay um, I mean nowadays uh, they have uh, a lot of uh, uh, group decision making to face or to meet uh, some managerial uh, problems as uh, we said that group dynamic uh, nowadays have uh, grown dramatically over the past uh, few decades, okay, many companies use uh, regularly uh, team uh, based on some approaches for organizational what task or for organizational functions. Uh, this part will show you the basics of group uh, dynamics and the way uh, teams work together and uh, should be effectively right uh, as we get used uh, for each part we have some selected uh, objectives and also for each objective i mean for this objective understanding group dynamics evolve from group to team reach closure and avoid common group uh, traps as as i said uh, uh, for each objective, we have a little or a brief um, introduction, and after that, it has uh, some uh, guidelines or some reasons or uh, some uh, elements, whatever. So, for the first objective in part four, which is understanding group dynamics, all right? In this part, we have uh, just two definitions, okay, two definitions about group dynamics. The first definition or the first concept about uh, group, what, what do you mean by uh, group? It means two, what, what do you mean by group? It means two or more people who interact with each other. What does it mean by uh, interact with each other? Like uh, here, you see share expectations and obligations, develop a common identity as a group, right? Share expectations or share, yes, expectations and commitments, and develop or raise up a common identity or common unity as a group, right? For group dynamics, <coughs> he said here, the way that people work and interact with each other. So group only, group is what? What? The contents, the formulation, okay? I mean, answering what are the components of uh, any group, right? But group dynamics uh, focus on the way as we said, the way that the people work and they interact with each other. So the first one, I mean group, we have to indicate for what? Group dynamic, we have to indicate for how. I mean how or the way <coughs> or the process that people work and they interact each other. Right? So for this objective, I see the year organization use groups and teams to make decisions for the problem and accomplish goals. Nowadays, for a lot of uh, giant companies, even small, okay, they always have uh, uh, what we call groups, okay, or work team, okay, to solve the problems. Maybe uh, in um, in production area, you can find what we call it uh, quality circle, quality circle. To what? To make decisions and solve the problems, what? To accomplish goals of quality, okay? Or to solve problems related to quality, to make decisions related to quality, right? So as we get used for this objective, we have some uh, guidelines here. It is not, uh, or they are not guidelines, okay? <coughs> they are... Uh, some reasons organizations are imp 
impressing group project okay impressing group project or encourage group project and teamwork for the following what reasons so this coming six six items or six components or six reasons why companies or organization encourage group projects right the first reason the first reason that can achieve I mean group projects or teamwork can achieve diversity can achieve diversity what I mean by diversity diversity in many variables in many aspects all right in many aspects such as culture such as even age even uh, sex okay or gender this diversity always lead to what different ideas different ideas all right different ideas and this will uh, also lead to enhance the solutions or ideas or alternatives okay so this is one reason why organizations are encouraging group projects and teamwork the second reason he said here rich experience base rich experience base i mean when you go and formulate group dynamics right you can guarantee some experiences some unique experiences related to each age each gender each culture i mean they are different in culture so you will have some sort of unique experience differences in i mean due to what differences for uh, experience for background or even educational background okay even <clears throat> different responsibilities all of them they are considered as an experience from outside this will enhance enhance what group dynamic power or can achieve group dynamic what objectives or goals so another or second reason why we have to go for group dynamics that we can enhance experience we can enhance experience from differences in education differences in experience differences in previous responsibilities and so on the third reason why organizations are encouraging group projects he said what enhanced <coughs> organizational memory enhanced organizational memory or empower organizational memory what does it mean by <coughs> organizational memory when employees work uh, together sometimes they develop what develop organizational memory as they learn i mean from where from where they have organizational memory what are sources of organizational memory they learn they learn about everything inside the organization they learn about it's i mean the organization it's what its process its personalities inside this what organization so all of that can enhance or enrich enrich the experience of the organization at, as a whole okay so enhanced organizational memory the third what third reason for uh, why organizations are embarrassing or encouraging group the second or the fourth one what we call it the error detection error detection well, detection or error discovering or error uh, identification or error specification something like that okay error detection i mean through groups you can have multiple the key word here multiple multiple levels of error checking error <coughs> or mistake checking mistakes may be unnoticed are more likely to be caught by other team members i mean if you have 10 
10 members or whatever, seven members in, in the team. So maybe some of them can catch, catch <clears throat> some mistakes, some errors conducted by others. Okay? If you have only one person, not group, okay, you cannot do that. But uh, error detection, one reason why we have to work through teams or through groups. Why? Because it is a possibility to detect some error, some mistakes done by others, done by others. Another reason, he said, what more creative solution, and this is logic, I mean, creativity or solutions to creativity could be enhanced or could be increased through group rather than through one individual or one person. Okay? He said here each each member inside the group okay will approach the problem differently from different point of views. If you have only one person, you have only one point of view, but Whenever you have a group, you have uh, what more approaches to conduct or to approach uh, problems. And of course, this will lead to more what ideas, more creative solutions to that problem, creative solutions to that uh, problem. Right? The reason number six, he said, what greater acceptance of decisions and uh, outcomes. Outcomes mean results. Sometimes we call it payoffs. Greater acceptance of decisions and uh, outcomes. I mean, if you <clears throat> participate, you can guarantee, I mean, if some, if some members can participate in the solution, you can uh, guarantee the acceptance the acceptance, especially in large groups which contains or which includes um, some members from different departments, from different branches, from different areas, right? From different regions, okay? Each individual could <clears throat> have, as long as they participate in decision making, as long as they participate in putting the decisions or making decisions and they will accept the outcomes. They will accept, you can guarantee that they, as long as they participate, very logic, okay? They will guarantee their acceptance, all right? So these are the six, what? Six reasons why we have to conduct our work through what we call it group dynamics. All right. We can move now to another objective, which is uh, <clears throat> evolving from a group to a team, from a group to a team. Um, we have some differences between group and team, even, even in the language. I mean, uh, your class is a group, but inside this uh, class, you have some teams. I mean, we can uh, formulate, uh, you are 30 students, so we can formulate uh, uh, teams. Each team include uh, five, uh, whatever, five students. So we have six teams, right? So here we have to differentiate even about the concept of uh, team, right? He said here in, in this little, um, introduction that people often form themselves into groups but they may or may not work well together okay i mean you are 30 students this is a group okay group three group two whatever the members of this group of your class may or may not work well together a group that is working well together is functioning as a team so we can guarantee that uh, group one, okay, it contains six teams. 
theme number A or theme A. This theme, we can guarantee that they work together and their functions as a team. They will have some sort of cooperation, some coordination, some division of tasks. All right. A team is a group of people who organize themselves to work cooperatively on a common work objective. So, your class is a group. This class is divided into six teams. Each team organize themselves to work cooperatively on a common objective. I mean, this team, each team may be the objective to uh, finalize their project uh, by the end of April. So all of you, these uh, six students in, or five students in that team, they have a common objective. Also for this little introduction, most groups pass through stages of uh, cohesion and understanding before they do useful work, right? <clears throat> Expect what? Okay. Most groups pass through stages of uh, cohesion and understanding before they do useful work. In this uh, objective, they will uh, conduct or show you the evolve, I mean the stages or the steps to move from a group to a team. The steps or process or stages of uh, the stages from a group or steps you have to conduct before moving from a group to a team. All right? So also for this uh, objective, as we get used, we have uh, some guidelines for evolving from group. If you want to evolve from group to a team, you have these uh, four guidelines. The first uh, <coughs> um, guideline here, you have to expect Expect socializing. Expect socializing. What do you mean by socializing? Also, the game means social, okay? This comes from social, okay? That as long as you deal with people, you have to socialize these people. You have to socialize the, the sharing about these people. Um, he, he he always uh, say you have to take time to know each other. I mean, we need time if you want to socialize a team or socialize a tighty group of individuals. You need what uh, some time to know each other. Okay, and here in this um, guideline, he gives you some uh, um, um, methods to socialize. He said what? He said, you have, everybody must introduce him or herself to each other. Uh, they have to have social interactions. They have to have personal sharing. Okay? And always, we need that as a first step, as a first step or first guideline to move from group to team to move from, to, from group to team. So socializing should be uh, early as possible, right? Another guideline, he said what? Encourage organizing and forming. Encourage organizing and forming. Don't forget, go for the title. We now we have some steps to go or to move from a group to a team. He said what? Encourage organizing and form. Always the group develop a shared <coughs> understanding of the main purpose of whatever, of department, of organization, of division. Okay? Encourage organizing. All of them, I mean all groups, must develop a shared understanding of the original mission, the original purpose 
from this organization. Why this organization exists? I mean, they have to share for that, right? They have to share for um, group domains, okay, or dominance, okay? They have to understand how people or individual inside the organization, how they work, how they operate, how they make decisions, okay? Participants, how often they meet, okay? Participants inside uh, any group, how many they meet to, I mean, weekly or monthly or what? This is, can <coughs> participate or can achieve moving from group to a team. He said what? Encourage organizing and forming. Develop sense of belonging. Develop sense of commitment. Develop sense of obligations toward that team or toward that group, right? Encourage organizing and form. So in, in this guideline, he give you some methods to encourage organizing and forming from group to team. As we said, he, he gave you that must, uh, participants must have uh, uh, frequency, I mean meeting frequency, they must develop sense of the belonging, they must understand how the organization work, okay? Uh, the third guideline here, he said what? Facilitate information sharing and processing. Facilitate, of course. Of course, if you want to formulate a team, you have to make it easy to each member for information sharing, okay? Information sharing and processing, okay? How responding openly, disclosing material, providing feedback, collect <coughs> or collaborative time, okay? I mean, facilitate, facilitate information sharing and processing. If you want to move uh, effectively from group to team, or if you want an effective effective team, you have to facilitate information. Which information? Sharing and uh, processing. To share information and uh, processing what information, make it easy for them, okay? So through what? Through disclosing material, as he said, through responding openly, through providing what uh, feedback. I mean, some sort of collaboration in information. The fourth guideline here, he said about collaborate to solve problems. For almost the same meaning, collaborate to solve problems. Okay? This could be achieved when two or more persons work together to produce greater than... Yes, I, I need to understand this statement. This could be achieved. What is that? What could be achieved? Collaborate to solve or collaboration to solve a problem could be achieved when two or more people work together to produce greater than the sum of their individual efforts. You understand that suppose you have uh, two individuals, each one work separately, and this one it's outcome 50, and that one outcome 40, so individually, so the summation 90, 90 whatever, 90 units, 90 whatever, okay? But if they work together, if they work together, the summation about of their effort should be greater than 90, should be 120, for example, right? This is the meaning here, that if you do that, you guarantee collaborative, collaborative between or among members, collaborative issues, 
okay among uh, members of uh, a team okay so in this step or in this stage to move from group to team in this stage you have to work together especially in complex problems share the decisions respect others okay <clears throat> again to achieve this guideline which is collaborate to solve the problem you have to i mean each member must complete their duties efficiently they must work together especially in complex problems and we said before what do you mean by complex problem complex problem this is a problem with a lot of variables a lot of forces a lot of components a lot of elements that whenever they have to <clears throat> increase quality so we have a complex problem here to increase quality or to reduce defective units we have to go for what it is or do we call it it is what a complex problem because financial people must go for that and you must participate production people must participate marketing people must participate hr people must participate in uh, in um, related to what related to offer or hire some employees for good quality so especially uh, for this guideline collaborate to solve the problem what uh, what are steps or what are methods to guarantee collaboration to solve the problem that everybody or every member must complete duties must go for <clears throat> complex problem must share decision must respect each other right we can move now to another objective which is reaching closure reaching closure and as we get used again for each objective i think now you get used about that for each objective we have to have some a little uh, introduction and after that some guidelines he said here for little introduction that some groups are designed to be ongoing okay ongoing concerns that move from one issue to the next some groups address a particular i mean here in this part for the first statement second statement he wants to show you that we can divide groups into two classifications one group designed to continue to continue okay i mean to continue that move from one issue to the next issue but some other groups they only go for a particular concern a particular concern so some groups and teams continue to work and move from one issue to another others they have only one issue as he said here particular issue or one issue <coughs> and that issue or that group is disbanded when the problem is solved i mean for only one reason for only one particular concern for only one particular concern and uh, they are gone as example as example some organization formulate what we call it the hr team okay to solve all problems related to HR such as training, hiring, firing, okay? <clears throat> but some others, some others, they only have uh, one issue whenever they go for only uh, hiring. And they have just today or this week, only they have uh, one problem about hiring some spe specific employees and after we solve this problem everything is over but for the first one 
not over. They move from one issue to the next. In the third statement here for introduction of reaching closure, it is common for a group to artificially prolong a process and not reach closer as efficiently as it could. I mean, in some organizations, they have some group, uh, they continue a process. And even they continue process, they do not reach closer as uh, suitable or as uh, a good uh, issue. It is common for a group to artificially prolong. Prolong means uh, extend. Okay, extend the process and not reach you closer as efficiently as it could. Okay, just to give you a little hint about that, um, even in, even uh, even that in some organization, some groups belong the process but without reaching a closure. Right? The issue here for any team leading, the leader I mean, is to reach closer as efficiently as possible. A team leader needs to provide direction to help the group develop what closure. And this is one of the main responsibilities of a team leader, that or leader, they must reach closure as efficiently as possible. All right? So this is what, this is a a little introduction about this objective, which is reaching close. Now we move for the guidelines or tips for uh, reaching what, uh, um, okay, tips for or guidelines for reaching closer. If you want to reach a closer eff effectively or efficiently, you have to consider the following tips. He said what? Use a command style. What do you mean by command style? Command style is that you have only one single individual who makes decisions. Okay? It is uh, uh, sometimes, it is not uh, uh, democratic completely, but you have only even, uh, I have a group or I have a team and we are 10 members. Yes, we can participate, but who takes the final part? Who takes the final decision? Only one. Okay? So it is better in some cases that the final decision comes from only one individual, always uh, is a boss or manager, right? This is what we call it the command what style. Even or in spite of that all of the members are participate, as I said, but the final word, the final decision comes from only one. Another tip or another guideline, use a consultative approach. I mean, this is very clear about consultative approach. In consultative approach, still the manager makes the final decision, but the process of decision making, it has some more democratic issues, though more democratic issues. Still, we have some sort of contributions from each member, right? Another guideline about use consensus decision making. Consensus decision making. Said what? Most of the group members can agree. I mean, if you want to have a successful team, a successful team, all members, all members must what? Must <coughs> agree or can agree. This requires more time for closure, guarantee high level of commitment or obligation. I mean, in other words, if you use consensus in decision making, you can guarantee more and more commitment about the decision, more and more acceptance about the decision. But it needs some time or more time before what closure. The final <coughs> tip for reaching closure, he said what select suitable voting what methods. 
And uh, this voting method is very easy and uh, simple. You can find it uh, <coughs> on page um, 83 in your textbook, right? Very easy and simple. Now I have to move about uh, avoiding common group uh, threats. Avoiding common group threats. Some groups, he said what? Well, some groups fall <coughs> into traps that slow progress, that may lead to slow or prevent or avoid or decrease progress and distract members and uh, transfer members or move members from the problem solving what objectives okay as uh, a little introduction here he said what some groups fall into somewhat traps and these traps always due to some difficulties in participating or managing the group itself. I mean, maybe <clears throat> some difficult because some of them did not participate. Some, I mean, of, part of uh, whatever members, maybe some of them did not, maybe some of them shy, shy to give an, an opinion or to give an idea or generate uh, solutions. He said here, the difficulties of participating in or managing a group are different from the challenges of solving problems on your own. I mean, these uh, uh, traps are not challenges, okay? But these are different, I mean, or some difficulties in conducting the teamwork process, all right? Also, here we have to have some guidelines for avoiding common group traps. Some guidelines for avoiding common group traps. He said what? If we have four guidelines or four traps you have to avoid. You have to prevent yourself. Who are you? I mean you are decision maker or, solve or problem solver. You don't have to go for these traps. The first trap, organize or the first, I mean, guideline, organize the overhead. What do you mean by overhead? Overhead here are some tasks such as communication, coordination, uh, scheduling or conducting timetables, okay? You cannot do everything by yourself, especially if you have uh, uh, some members from different areas, from different departments, or from different divisions, okay? I mean, organize the overhead, okay? So you can <clears throat> guarantee some sort of uh, participation, okay? You cannot be, do everything by yourself. You have to organize, you have to distribute. You have to assign some responsibility. Maybe uh, this member is responsible about uh, timetable. This member is responsible about communication. This uh, member is responsible or in charge of coordination. Okay? I mean, organize, divide, make some sort of delegation, make some uh, dividing or assigning, make some sort of assignment about some tasks. I mean overhead the tasks. In other guideline, he said what? Watch out for stress. Watch out for stress. Always, especially in a giant organization, teamworks always have very critical issues, very critical topics, okay? significant, critical, risky, costly, and maybe you have very uh, tight um, time, tight, less information, uh, you have uh, 
uh, less information, you have less time, you have, uh, you are limited with information, you are limited with <coughs> time. So he advises you here to watch out for stress because all of these issues such as criticality and risky and costly and limited time, limited budget, limited uh, information, this will lead to some sort of stress. Stress on what? On or whom? On teamwork members, right? And this also will lead to what? Very bad decisions or unsuitable decisions. Okay, so we have to say here about what are the methods to reduce uh, stress. As long as he said, uh, avoid uh, stress or watch out for stress, okay? So how can we decrease, okay, stress? You as a decision maker or you as a member inside the team, you have to be positive, optimistic, uh, I mean, even your, your tone, your tone in, uh, in meetings, you have to be uh, positive tone or optimistic tone uh, during sessions or during meetings, okay? Maybe you can even, uh, something very simple to offer some refreshments inside the, the meeting, I mean even. So you have to be aware about stress. You have to be aware about stress. This is another tip, okay? Do not uh, fall in this uh, trap. What is that trap? That you do not watch out for stress, right? The third <coughs> um, tip, or the third tip, uh, or the third guideline, he said what? Avoid the Superman complex. Superman complex. What do you mean by Superman complex? <clears throat> Superman complex here means that some of the uh, members inside the team, they think or they assume that all of their decisions always optimal or right. All of their uh, plans they establish are optimal, right? They always, he said here, if a group has a collective sense of uh, <clears throat> influenceability, okay, this means that you have Superman complex. Superman complex. Superman complex, like some members, they, they think they, they are uh, Superman. Why you are Superman? Because I know everything. Why you are Superman? Because my decision is always right. Because my plan is always optimal. But uh, in real life, this is not true. You, so you avoid to make like that. You avoid that you think that all of your decisions are correct and optimal. And we can decrease uh, this issue through what? Through we can encourage our members to attend other uh, meetings, okay? I mean, if I have uh, this uh, trap in my meeting or in my uh, group members or team members, I can say, okay, go outside and see uh, about other meetings. Do they, uh, or make some sort of benchmark with uh, uh, other meetings. Go and compare yourself with other meetings. Go and um, show or observe what other meetings they are doing, right? So we can decrease uh, this uh, superman uh, complexity <coughs> by attending other meetings, by inviting some members from outside. Some mem we can. Uh, <coughs> invite some people or some individuals or maybe some experts, some uh, consultants from outside to attend our meetings, okay? So maybe we can learn some something from them. Maybe uh, one of them, I mean outsiders, uh, members, these outsider members, maybe they have better idea, better decision, okay? 
I mean, they have to, or you can reduce uh, complexity by inviting some external uh, members or some external individuals from outside. The final, uh, or the last uh, trap here, look out for group thing. Look out means what? Be aware, okay? Be aware or be careful from group thing. What do you mean by group thing? When <clears throat> individual creativity and independent thinking get lost from the team consistency, this is what we call it group thinking. Again, suppose I have a team, right? And this team, nobody here, nobody has individual creativity. Nobody has his or her own thinking, okay, or creativity. If we have, if we have not this creativity and independent thinking, so we can lose the consistency of our team, the consistency of our team. If you lose your consistency in our team because we do not have creativity or <clears throat> individual creativity or independent thinking, in this case, we have what we call it the group thing, okay, group thing. In this case, in this case, uh, some people, even they get shy, they shy. Our, some members, they give, they shy to expose or to represent their ideas or their opinions or their solutions. So be aware from that. It is a trap. Do not or avoid look out for group thing. Avoid losing creativity and independent what I mean. So you have to encourage, you encourage your members to create, to think independently so you can generate what better solution, better decisions, better whatever. Alright? So uh, this all of um, or these materials only you have in charge with all of these materials you have uh, only in charge of uh, part four all right thank you for your listening and uh, good luck or uh, i wish you good luck